Hi friend, how are you on this Monday night? This is the evening version of my daily video, fireside chat I call it, just because it's cozy, right? Huga and cozy, all of those things rolled up into one. So we are on the last day of the getting our jelly roll quilt made up. So whichever jelly roll quilt you are making, it is time to wrap that baby up so that you have it done by the end of the year. So let's look at mine. I used Morrison Park and I was doing the, what I would call the background or the consistent fabric between each block. There was a print and then the one that was the same in every block. Many people, you might've used a solid. Well, I used that little stripe in Morrison Park. And so here it is with the border on it. And I did put the stripe on the border. Look at that. I'm so excited. Let me just go over here a minute. Um, I'll zoom this in and I'll pop a little picture over here of a close up because what I did is on the corners, I just don't think you can see, but you can see it in the close up. The corners, I decided to miter them. And I can tell you, I have not mitered corners in a long time. And it was fun. It is more work. It takes you more time, but it's not hard work, but there's a little bit of math and a little bit of precision that has to happen. You can't just sort of slap on a mitered border. <laughs> But what I did is I went out, because I would not done it in a long time, uh, Kimberly Jolly of the Fat Quarter Shop has a great video that she did a few years ago, so I have that linked below. And uh, I just followed her video because it you know, walked you through step by step what you need to do to put on a miter border. Now I did not go that extra step of being sure all the stripes lined up. These are pretty thin stripes and I decided that I just didn't want to maneuver that. Um, but if you have like wider stripes, like you'll see on her example in her video, she's got um, the stripes. The stripe itself is thin, but there's a big distance between them. And so she lined them up so that they took right next to each other. But you can see in this close up here how mine came out. So it wasn't too bad for having them, you know, a close stripe. I was pretty happy. I'm pretty happy with it. So that is done. This is kind of an interesting quilt because it's got that it's got like it's called the golden triangle of size i think but it's uh i would probably make it a little bit wider uh than it is long but it turned out really cute uh, i like it i like it in the morrison park it was fun to use all the prints in the jelly roll and i think that that's what i've noticed with all of your quilts as well is that you know whatever jelly roll you pick to work on it was really fun to see the blocks as they developed and you got to play with all those different fabrics so that is, that's the cool part about using the entire collection in one quilt is that you get to see all the different fabrics and enjoy them. So there you go. Now that guy is, the top is a flimsy now. We got a flimsy here in the house. And so it will probably go to the spa to be quilted by Cindy and Dennis uh, in January. I'm gonna send a handful of them over there from this year because I decided from this year, I decided like I should from every year forward not leave tops, not leave the flimsies into the next year. So we'll work on getting that <laughs> for 2021. We'll work on making that happen. <laughs> so. So also, this is our Monday to kick off the elephant. The elephant so along, yay! Uh, this is gonna be so fun. It is from my friend Wendy Shepard's pattern. And so this is Wendy's pattern, yay! Uh, so cute. Uh, Wendy is a fabulous designer. You, um, if you follow her, she, you follow her for, at her website uh, Ivory Spring, and you can follow her over on Instagram. Uh, and she shares loads of things, uh, lots of quilts and progress and her quilting um, and her finished quilts. So, but the Elephant Stomp, it's Stomping Grounds is the name of it. And you can, it's a, what size is the quilt? Well, it's on here somewhere. Oh, it's 48 by 60, so it's a great size quilt. And you can make it a little bit bigger if you wanna put a border on it. Uh, otherwise, she just uses the background as a small border around it when it's done, just like you see here. So today, you're, you need to get your plan, your elephant plan. 
So let's take a look at the block for a minute. Let me, let me pull this down here because this is how you can get things done is to actually have a plan. Now I can't show you the pattern because of course you have to buy the pattern. Um, but I can talk to you about what is going on with it. So the elephant has, is, has several parts to them. So the body is all one fabric and she has you cutting, I think it's two from the fat quarter. And um, you know, so, and then there's the, the ears and then the, whoops, then the trunks. So if you wanted to do some um, sort of chain piecing of units that are the same, you could take the ear with like your background fabric and you could get all your ears made. And same with the trunk unit, this whole unit here with your background fabric, you could get this whole unit made. Uh, and that could just sit then. And then if you wanted, you could make the rest of the body uh, you know, like a couple, like one a day or one every couple of days. Um, you could just do all of it as sort of a chain piecing thing. If you cut all the, I highly recommend, let's come up here a minute. Before you start cutting everything out, uh, I always recommend you make a test block. And it doesn't, it's not a test, you make one of the blocks. Just make one block. I mean, that's what I did with Norm. And Norm is, you know, back there in the corner. <laughs> just because he's, he's hiding, he's not bad, he's just hiding. Uh, but when I made, with that quilt, it's really designed to make, to, to cut everything and then piece as units, piece all the faces, piece all the bodies, piece all the hats. Um, but I always like to make one up just so that I understand the directions, I understand what's going on. Um, you might have like directional fabric. So if you're working with a directional fabric that it matters to you, you know, the, the, these body units, you want to look at your fabric and see, um, if it's directional, do you really have, you know, do, does, you know, do you want to be sure that you don't have like something upside down on, you know, on it or, or sideways, you know, like a house, like if you're using something that has like little figures in it, you know, you might want to fussy cut. So today and tomorrow, the next day, whatever, the next couple days here, we're gonna be sewing this all through January, sharing, sharing blocks, we'll be sharing blocks. So really it's the planning part. Get, get your sort of tactics of how you want to approach it. Make one of the blocks, share it over in the Facebook group, Quill Along with Pat Sloan. Uh, and at my website, I have a link here below and in the first comment where you can go over to my website and you can leave a, a photo there. I have photo sharing at the end of that. Um, and also I have a little bit more sort of fun, fun elephant facts uh, over at my website because it seems elephants are considered good luck to many people. And you know, just being an elephant, you are, you know, oozing good luck to everybody. Uh, but there also are good luck times when the elephant's trunks are up and good luck times when the elephant is relaxed and the trunk is down like this. And so there's all these good luck things out there, which I think are just very awesome to uh, embrace because we all need some good luck right now, right? We all need some happy things. And, and that just seems like the best thing is to have our sweet elephants and think about all the good luck parts of of them. The good luck they bring us for making them into a cute, cute quilt. Uh, so if you, if you get one block made, then you'll understand sort of, you'll see the construction of it. Um, and like here, I'll show you because you might wonder why isn't this one piece of fabric? Well, if it were, you wouldn't be able to piece some of these other parts. So this is done as two pieces of fabric. And so it's a construction issue. Um, you know, you can't sew across here because otherwise you'd have to make that part, the trunk, two pieces of fabric, and you don't want to do that. You make it the background. So it's a construction issue. Now, if you are trying to squeeze this out of a layer cake, you definitely need to, like I showed you on the one video, you need to do a test because you only have a few shavings of fabric left from a layer cake from a 10 inch square to get the body parts. So you want to like make one test and then you'll know where you have to place things. Um, you can like cut some p pieces out like of paper, the shapes out of paper and just lay them on there and get it all set up right. Okay. 
So we are off and running with the elephant stomp. Uh, so excited. <laughs> I am so excited. Now, in a couple of days, I'll start sharing blocks again. I have some other work I have to I have to do. Uh, so I have got the planning part, and you can start sewing them. You have the pattern, so you know if you want to just sew the elephant all at once and sew the elephant. But if you want to have fun and sort of do one a day or something like that, you know, or one every couple of days, a couple every couple of days, because we have how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's 18 elephants, right? I think that counted that, yeah, 18 elephants. And so that would give you, like if you were making them uh, you know, all through uh, January, you wouldn't have to do one every day. You could do one every couple days and then every other day or something. And then you still have time to put the rows together. Like I'm gonna put the rows together as I make them. I'm gonna make them sew a row together. Uh, and then I will get it quilted. So that would be the whole goal is by the end of January to have the quilted elephants for massive good luck. <laughs> I'm sure that they give us more good luck if it's a quilted quilt. <laughs> that's, that's, that's my theory. That's <laughs> okay. How about a finish from me? <laughs> yes, I got the Dear Jane. Totally done. First, I have to show you the label. Here is my whole label. Um, I wrote out all of the story, all of the, almost all the things on here that I could think of that had to do with the Dear Jane, including uh, that I started this in June of 1997, and that's maybe not exactly 100% true, but that's very close. In 97. 1997 it feels like a thousand years ago uh, but this is when I took the class I took my mother-in-law to the class with Brenda Papadakis who is the author who put the book together from the Jane Stickle Civil War quilt with the um, museum's blessing she worked with the museum to do this uh, so there you go I have my binding on and I did my hanging sleeve and it is uh, it is sewn down. So a lot of you keep asking me about a hanging sleeve, like it's some big mystery. I, I'm like a little confused about why it's some big mystery. It is just a strip. It is a strip. And I iron under one fourth of an inch here. And I put this part into the binding. When I put the binding on, the top edge is all the way up to the top. So when the binding comes on, it covers it. Then this is just a flap hanging here, loose. Uh, and I stitch it down. So that's it. The bindings, I mean, hanging sleeves are not like a big mystery. They're just a strip of fabric and you sew down, you put one end of it in the binding and you sew the other end down. I know people keep asking me, do a tutorial. It's like, that was it. <laughs> so, but maybe someday I'll do one, more, do another tutorial. That's like, oh, okay. I want to show you my book too, because now the book is out of print, but I believe the electric quilt is still there so that you could get the electric quilt, which actually will help you make the patterns more. Because the book, see we had a name tag from when we went to the class, but the book doesn't have directions. The book just has diagrams. This is it. This is what the book has. So like I had to draft, like here is one for this block. Right? No. Well, it's probably, yeah, it's close to this block, but I was messing around with drafting it. I just didn't do the other lines. But, you know, it is too small. <laughs> That's probably why it's in the bag. But you had to draft everything, 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 and then decide how you wanted to construct it yourself. Like, did I want to do curves here, or would I have wanted to maybe applique that on there? Um, you know, you just had to figure it out yourself. Uh, then the book also had some, these were, uh, whenever you made a quilt that wasn't all, this, this, this quilt has, um, what's this, I can't read upside down, 200 and, 225 patterns, yeah, this quilt has 225, there's 225 patterns in this quilt, which includes these triangles, you know, so like, 
the ice cream cones. Yes, what a lot of times they were called, plus the corners. Those are all different, all four. So that's how many patterns are in here. And if you made the whole quilt, you made a Dear Jane quilt. If you made something with less blocks like mine, it's called a Baby Jane. So this is what the book looked like. There were stories in here that that Brenda put in, the author. Um, oh, it's, it was quite, quite, quite a fun adventure. And I'm very happy, very happy it's done. <laughs> That's, I can't. I don't need any more quilts that have been hanging around since 97. I have one other quilt top that's probably about the same age, maybe about the same age. It's a monster top though. It's like 110 by 110 and it is applique, large um, uh, grandmother's flower garden blocks applique to squares and the squares sewn together. So someday I need to get that beast quilted. <laughs> because it's, it's a long time ago. I did that one. Ah. All right. What else have we got going on here? Um, let me show you another little project I said I was going to do, and I did it. I did the uh, cross stitch. Remember I said I was going to dye the fabric? I didn't bring the writ dye out here. So anyway, it was... This was the fabric I had to dye this cloth for doing, hold on, hold on, hold on, for doing this snowman. So the snowman guy, I decided that, you know, I wanted to really pop him against a stronger color. So I thought, well, you know, this, I had this, I had some tans, but the, I didn't feel like the whites really pop off of those very well. So I decided I had two, two of these, this particular one. So I would, oh, I would over dye one of them. So what I did first, let me just show it to you. Let me show you the first one, one, one thing, and then I'll show you something else. So here it is, Rip Tan Navy Dye. Um, and okay, so what did I do? First thing I did was I took this out of here and I really said I took this out of here and I and I rinsed it, I washed it because this particular one is fairly stiff. And so I wasn't sure what kind of resins or other things might still be in the cloth that would keep it from absorbing the dye, possibly. So you'll see that this has a mottled side, see that? It's a mod which is quite nice. And then the other side is not modeled. It's, uh, it's solid. So I thought, well, that was interesting because that means this modeled is printed on here. Uh, otherwise, it would be modeled on both sides if, they had, if it was a hand-dyed fabric. If you went and bought some hand-dyed fabric, it would be the same sort of modeling you know, variegation on both sides. One side wouldn't be solid. So that means that's printed on there. So I didn't know how that would take or how it would look. So I'm gonna pop a picture up here of the bath that I gave it. <laughs> I used a little, like, it was like an old ice cream tub and I put, uh, I followed the directions because you're supposed to put a little bit of soap. It tells you a little bit of soap, some salt for cotton. This is cotton. And then you put the cloth in. So I put the cloth in for a couple of minutes and I made the bath color wise um, I mean, this is, not, this is a small tub, so I maybe used two tablespoons. I just sort of chunked it in like that, you know. <laughs> I didn't measure it. I didn't measure it. Uh, so I chunked it in, and I leave, left it in there for maybe about two minutes. I used a straw to stir it because you don't want any food, anything you're going to use with food. You know, after you're done dying in, a, in there, you need to all be things that you don't use with food. So I had a straw that I threw away. So they took it out. And this is what the solid side looks like. And I think it's gorgeous. It is really, really pretty. It has a little bit of variation in color, you can see there. But now I'm gonna show you the back, which was this printed part. So when I turn it over, here is what the back looked like. Now I find that totally fascinating. So it looks like a night sky, you know, could you see like maybe doing one of the Halloween ones on this? 
that would be really cool. So I don't, I'm gonna do the snowman on this, on the one that's the more solid side because this is, um, I like this, but it's not my, what my vision was. This was my vision, is to have something more solid. And I, you know, having washed and rinsed it twice now, this fiber is, you know, much softer than when it was right out of the package. So I'm getting this guy ready now to stitch him up. Uh, I say that like I do it really fast. <laughs> I just I'm stitch him up. Like, you know, if I get it done by the end of January, I'll be happy. <laughs> it's like I'm a, I don't, I don't cross stitch every day. You know, I cross stitch a little bit and then I do other stuff. So it is not my primary thing that I do, but I would like to do it more frequently that is a goal for 2021 is to more frequently cross stitch even if i just do a little bit every day um i think that would be that would be useful <laughs> okay so he is oh i got background i got that sort of cool navy and it was fun i have not dyed anything in a long time when i used to do this i would dye bigger units of things i did a lot of primitive work where i would over dye fabrics i would bleach them and over dye them and i basically did them in the washing machine um, and I, you know, I primarily used uh, tan, writ tan powder. I didn't use the liquid dye. But so this, this one I think turned out really well. I'm really happy with it. I'm not going to be washing it afterwards. It's just a cute little project. It's not like an heirloom thing. So I am super excited to play around with it. It's, uh, it's really nice. Okay, I wanna show you, I wanna show you some um, little club things that came in from the Confident Stitch. Uh, they, whoops. Okay, I think I can pop these open. Kate at the Confident, Confident Stitch does a swatch club and I've showed you these ones as they've come in and she's so nice, she sends them to me. And so they, she has quilting and clothing. So this is the quilting one. So let's take a, take a look. She has uh, a lot of, if you like to make clothing, she does a lot of clothing things. There's Kate. So she always does the fabrics that come in the swatch for the, uh, the quarter. There we go. Here they are for this time. And she made them up into some pot holders. So that's really cute. I love these greens together. And this, uh, this is a really gorgeous light blue. This is a cotton and steel. Uh, and this, this gold. Then there's some more like the yellow and another sort of mint color. I think this has cheeses on it. Oh, isn't that fun? Yeah, these are cheeses. <laughs> and then a red. And she tells you about the fabric when you lift it up. She tells you about it and you can then order order the actual fabrics then. You can use these because they're real, they're real fabrics. So you can put these in your stash uh, if you decide not to order them. But she does her clothing ones in two cool and warm fibers. So depending on what you like to make, there she goes. This, ah, look at all these gorgeous. See, now I wanna start making some clothing. That is something I really want to do. Um, I love that herringbone. Oh my gosh, that's so soft. That is so soft. Very, very fun stuff. That looks like it'd be a great coat. It's boiled wool. That would make a fabulous coat, a jacket. So we've seen those people making, uh, taking quilts and making them into jackets. Anybody tempted to do that? Here is her other swatch set. So these are the warm colors. Isn't that toasty warm? Look at the lace. I like the, oh, this is very nice. Flannel in gray, pinstripe, and another um, boiled wool that's very cozy. This looks a, uh, this is a toasted Taos flannel. That looks gorgeous. That'd be like a pretty bag. Okay, I will link you up if you are interested in these uh, over at the Confidence Stitch. I always like to see new stuff. And like I've mentioned before, I got swatch kits, swatch sets when I was, um, sewing clothing like way million years ago when that's primarily what I did was sew clothing I got swatch kits and I loved I loved having them so this is kind of a fun throwback for me to see them again I'm looking here because I've lost it 
Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, it'll probably appear after I'm done, but <laughs> we're doing the Home Is starting the first Wednesday in January. And I wanted to show you, I have my basket here with the Home Is. I'm using primarily, I'm using Christopher's collection, uh, which is navy, media, different shades of blue, white with with um, blue on it and then a little bit of gray. I'm also going to pop in some of this collection which is an art gallery bundle that's called Americana and they do have a couple of these left so it has a little bit of red I'm going to pop in there of course and then more blue so that's I got this mostly because it had so much blue mm. and um, there, there you go. I also am using uh, Christopher's Blossom with these little tiny dots. And then I'm going to go through my stash and find some funky blue fabrics that I already own. So these are some older fabrics that I've had for a while. The birds, the soda pop, the, <laughs> of course, of course, the rainbows and telephones. These are from either they're the, the ladies who from um, Ruby Society, which used to be Cotton and Steel. And I don't remember which company these what they were doing then, but I've had these a little while. Um, and I have to keep digging through because I have uh, some other light blues and then plus the background fabrics, the light background fabrics. I'm going to mix them up. I'm not going to use just, I'm not going to use only this one you know this will be the primary one but I will also add in other lights that I have that, that have images on them so I need to go through and find some fun ones I've been working on the design so that's been really good and I'm liking how it's turning out and getting the first couple patterns ready for home is so that we can be oh there's my sheet so the home is can be ready to go on on the first Wednesday, which is January 6th. So you can get your supply list if you haven't done that yet. Okay, and the last thing to wrap up this Monday is to, to I've been thinking about a couple things. One is my word of the year, which I've been doing for, I forget how many years, but I need to pick a word of the year and I've been sort of mulling along different things. I haven't quite, haven't quite figured out what I want yet, but, um, one word that's come up for me is I, I like cozy and the things for huga, but I'm also thinking of the word do, like D zero, do. So that each month, this is like I would have do and then what it is I want to, want to experience or try or make happen for that month, which goes with the plan. So I kind of like that word do uh, because I can incorporate it with my plan. So I have been looking at this and there's, I've decided that I definitely am going to have a January plan, just January, these categories, things like um, for the cooking of things, definitely baking sourdough bread, plus learning how to take the sourdough, um, the, the discard. When you're making sourdough starter, you have discard. Well, you can make all kinds of cool things with the discard, like yummy crackers. And so that's one of my uh, things is, is the sourdough starter. Um, for indoors, one of the things I'd like to do is start documenting my quilts that I've talked about. I have to get them documented so that I can reduce the amount of quilts that I have, but I have to document them first. So basically I need to get started on that and I want to do some of them in January. So if I don't do any, they never get done. So I need to push that forward. Health-wise, I definitely am going to walk and I'm going to take yoga, but with Adrian's January uh, challenge to do yoga every day with her. She usually has like a t-shirt you can buy and so I'm gonna have to get the t-shirt. And I've been cleared by my occupational therapist that I can do the yoga, I can press on here. It strains it quite a bit and I can't do it uh, exactly, you know, like everything or as long, but I can do a little bit because all of that is working and strengthening those wrist muscles. And so that is what I will be doing. And, uh, you, you know, I have this one on here, our attitude, right? Uh, <laughs> so January is often the, a hard month for me, January, February, to be honest, and March, <laughs> three months, but January off, often kicks it off because 
uh, it's cold and you know it can be dreary and and so um, I can get a little crabby about all that and be like well I don't want to live here you know it's too cold um, but so that's my attitude adjustment in January whenever I sort of getting like that I might just jump in the car and take a drive maybe go to the drive through Starbucks since I'm not going inside buildings yet until COVID's a little bit better situation so I could just go through the drive through um, or just take a drive around town I just need to uh, when I get sort of blah is just to get out and do something a little different get out of my routine so that'll be what how I handle my attitude <laughs> when that happens <laughs> so I'd love to hear what you will do you, I, you can download this at my website today. The link is below. And I put it in the first comment for those of you who can't find out how to get the description box under all the videos. Um, I've been trying to remember to put it as the first comment. Uh, you are cleared to sew elephant blocks. Da, 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 da. <laughs> oh, they're so cute. Here, you can get a close up. Look at her little eye. See how I had the fabric over here? Looks like her eye. So darling. Um, Wendy is also going to be making some. She's, uh, you'll follow her on Instagram at Ivory Springs, Wendy Shepherd. It's going to be great. We're going to have so much fun. We still have a few more days here in 2020, uh, in December. So then we get to go to a new year. Flip that page. I'm ready, baby. Uh, <laughs> so I love you. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you. I will see you online.